You know, the most rewarding thing I've ever done was giving birth to four children and learning how to be a successful mother. Your children are not your children, the Lebanese poet Kahil Gibran wrote. He said, quote, They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself, and you, you are nothing but the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. End of quote. I love this quote. Not only because having brought up four children by four different men, all on my own, I believe it's just about the most accurate description of parenthood that I've ever heard. It emphasizes the lightness that develops when we give up trying to be perfect and come to trust the processes of nature while feeding and healing and guiding each of our children towards what works best for them at any moment in time, because it changes all the time. Like the seed of a plant which has encoded within its genetic material the characteristics that will in time produce a full-grown flower, every baby comes into this world carrying a package of incredibly rich potentials that encompass his or her unique nature. Now, this is something I call seed power, and it holds far greater physical, creative, and spiritual energy than any of us could hope to experience in ten lifetimes. You see, for me, each child is like is like the brush stroke that a Zen painter makes to represent one leaf on a shaft of bamboo. The leaf he paints is totally singular, like no other leaf that's ever existed before, yet within this uniqueness, your child's universal beauty is to be found, as well as life energy of the highest order. When my first son, Branton, was born, I was 18 years old in university. And like most parents, I had some harebrained idea that we parents needed to mold our children from the outside. We needed to impose on them our ideas about what they should look like and act like and think like and all the rest. (laughs) Of course, it never works. But when we're young and naive, as I was, we just don't know any better. With a bit of luck, sooner or later we come to realize that what most certainly does work is not trying to mold a child at all. What works is just listening to the whispers of each child's seed power that comes from within them. By doing this, we come to respond to our children offering whatever at any moment seems most useful to them in the form of food or health or guidance or education or whatever. And this is a lot easier and more successful all around. Taking on the job of guardian for any child from birth to adulthood involves having to make contractual agreements, which, of course, must be renegotiated from time to time as the child grows. Like every contract, the parent-child relationship is always a two-way deal. It has to be, to be fair on both sides. It also has to nurture both people involved. How well your own contracts develop and how much joy there is in them for both of you in fulfilling them, this depends to a great extent, I think, on how clearly the agreements between the two of you are made and understood. Let me show you what I mean. In establishing contracts with my own children, I was sure of a few things. First, I wanted to supply them with wholesome food and clean surroundings and physical warmth and safety. I also wanted them to have the right to their own opinions, even when they markedly differed from my own. In return, I expected them to appreciate the home and food and care that I provided for them, although I knew it would never be perfect. I also demanded that they be as honest and respectful of me and my decisions as their age would allow. What I never ask of my children, and this is where I think so many parents go wrong, is that they love me. Trying to get into that kind of an agreement creates nothing but trouble. I believe that whether your child loves you or not is fundamentally beside the point. Our responsibility as a parent is to use our best judgment and physical resources to help our child grow and to discover his or her unique gifts. 
Early on, I decided that I would try to do my best for my children, but they were stuck with me as a parent, for better or worse, complete with all my warts, and believe me, there were many. And while I didn't expect them to love me, I did expect them to know that whatever I did, I did because I believed it to be right. Whenever some decision I made or action I took turned out to be wrong, I would always own up and ask for their forgiveness, just as I forgave them for their mistakes. Now, the secret is, what I found out quite by accident was that there was a certain magic in all this. You see, when you decide to give up all claims to being a so-called good parent or having your child love you, this creates a vast expanse of freedom for both of you. What's more, not only do children eventually end up loving you of their own accord, they develop a lot of respect for you, whether they agree with you or not. And most important of all, they come to feel safe because they know that even though you can be unreasonable at times and unbending, your strength, on which they rely for security, remains uncorrupted by flattery or the kind of emotional blackmail which even very young children are masters at. In time, they learn that your strength is there to serve them. It's a discovery that can bring a sense of joy even during the most challenging of times. Now, of course, all my four children are grown up. My daughter, Susanna, and I have written five books together. My youngest son, Aaron, and I work together developing internet sites, which some tell us can even be life-changing. By now, my other two sons, Brandon and Jesse, have families of their own, including six unique and highly independent children. This makes me a grandmother. I adore all of them but I have to confess that I'm probably the world's worst grandmother. I don't bake cookies, babysit, or do any of the expected things that grandmothers are supposed to do. Why? Well, I loved being a mother more than anything in the world, but now I've done it. So now my future belongs to me. I feel there are lots more adventures that lie ahead for me now and I need to be free to explore them. What I find so wonderful is that all four of my children respect and understand where I'm coming from and, without judgment, bless me just for being who I am. 